I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? Crap. My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes. Older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. So I had to give her a chance. This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life, before Molly left me and took our daughter. Who is this dame, anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on. Spill it. From the beginning.
Every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. Legs that go on for days, deep, dark eyes, silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here. I don't even know what these papers are. Must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Stop playing the frightened prey, sunshine, and start singing. But please, I... I don't like this cocky behavior. Excuse the expression. Look, maybe it's best if we act like we never met, and you gallop out of here on your pretty long legs before I get rude. I can be rude, believe it or not. Uh, I'm very disappointed in you, Mr. Featherland. Happens to most people, you know. Tell me, do you break into strangers' homes often? But please, I've heard you're straightforward and... Rude? Yes, exactly, but... And you're galloping away from the question, ma'am. No offense, of course. Well, what can I say? It's a racial trait. Everybody has to be good at something. You're right about that. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. 
She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. How did you get this address? You know, my mistress has exceptional connections. If they were so exceptional, she wouldn't have chosen me. Don't be so hard on yourself, detective. You were the head of the famous chicken police, am I right? Was it a raccoon with a scarred face called Zip who recommended me? He hates me. No, Mr. Featherland. I don't know anyone like that. Lucky for you, Deborah. What exactly did you expect by coming here to meet me? I expected your help, just like my mistress said. Oh, that's very nice. But have you seen this neighborhood? Have you seen this wreck called a hotel? Who were you hoping to find in a place like this? Someone reliable. Well, I am reliable. And discreet? That's right. And thorough? No question about that. And has a heart of gold. Okay, let's stop it right there. Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah, and I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino, I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. If you won't come clean, what's the point of all this? But, Mr. Featherland... I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I'm way too old for this game. Please, just think again. For me and my mistress's sake. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. Huh. Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him, Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. 